Molly, thank you very much for joining me. Now, a lot of us freedom-minded people are concerned that this bill may not have struck the balance correctly uh, when it comes to balancing safety for children and freedom of speech. Where do you stand? I think it's a really difficult one. And I think it's interesting because often child safety is pitted against freedom of speech. And that's been the case with this bill, hasn't it? I mean, you're generally thought to be either in the free speech camp and then you don't like the legal but harmful provisions or in the child safety camp, um, in which case you want stronger provisions. And I think coming at it as, as you know, obviously a child um, welfare campaigner, but also from the point of view of an organisation that has been hit directly by censorship. Obviously, our PayPal account was cancelled a few months ago. And although it's you know a different issue, it is related. It goes to the essence of free speech and what we allow our campaign groups and people to say online. I actually think that free speech is essential for child safety. And my worry with the bill actually is that, you know, from a child safety point of view, um, does it go far enough? Can it ever go far enough when you also have this concern about free speech? And actually, do we need another approach? And, you know, the reality is that at the moment, the bill is the only thing in town. So, you know, my view is child safety um, is absolutely paramount and it is very hard to attack the bill when there's no other reality for protecting online safety. But I do think it is time to ask whether we need an altogether tougher approach. So one thing we could look at is regulation of smartphones themselves. You know, we seem to be assuming that smartphones and children are okay. And therefore, the what the, um, the online safety bills, it regulates the content. And I think maybe we need to step back a bit and say, well, actually, how have we got to a point where, you know, 60% of eight to 11 year olds own smartphones? Why are we allowing what is an inherently, it appears, dangerous product to be rolled out to children? But I, I take your point on that, and I do think it's disturbing just how young children are when they start picking up a phone, not least for their educational mm -hmm. development. I mean, why would you bother picking up a book if you've got um, an iPad in front of you or a smartphone? But surely, surely, the duty has to be on parents and carers, guardians of children to decide when and if their child will start using a phone. Surely that can't be up to tech companies to regulate or indeed the government. So I only agree with that to a point. So, you know, I am as libertarian um, as your next woman. And, you know, I would say for adults, I feel very strongly libertarian. And um, I wouldn't agree with that kind of approach for adults. However, I do think there are areas where a duty, our duty to protect children overrides otherwise libertarian principles. So I think the closest analogy here is actually cigarettes. Cigarettes, are a dangerous, addictive substance. For that reason, the state has intervened. It took a long time, actually, but the state intervened and says you can't market and sell this product to children. I don't see how smartphones in their current format are any different to that. I will readily accept that tech companies might get their act together and make these products safer for children. They might make the algorithms safer. They might regulate the content in a way that means we actually have effective age verification. But the reality is that is not happening now. What we have is a really dangerous, addictive product that is being given to children. And I think, although it is, you know, I totally get your point, Emily, that of course, parents do have a massive role here. 